Hey guys, how's it going? So this morning I wanted to give you a quick tour of the front of our chicken coop and our brick circle area, kind of this whole spot right here because everything's looking really pretty and we will do a full tour here soon but there's a lot of activity going on right now you might even be able to hear some of the building going on we have some gravel work being done up front so it will be soon where we do a full tour for you but this is just looking so pretty that i wanted to just talk about what i planted and some of my plans and so forth so let's just start right here in front of the chicken coop with these containers so I have two containers that match each other that flank this whole chicken coop run area. These are actually, are these rolled rim, I think is what they're called from Crescent Gardens. So they're not terracotta, these are actually plastic. They're double walled and I love them. I think they look really good. And they were the right size for this area. And then I've got Serbian spruce lollipops up here. And they've been in here since, since last spring. And they do really well, no matter what I put below them, they seem to take the daily watering just fine and they don't tend to brown out or um, act incompatible with the amount of water that our annuals need. Right below, I've got the osteospermum called Bright Lights White. They looked so stringy when I put them in and now they're so thick and beautiful and full of buds. And these get the brutal afternoon sun. So I'm really happy about how everything's doing in here. We've got a superbina called Peachy Keen beautiful coral pink and I like how it's always like in three different shades you've got this really nice light pink then the deeper and then that coral dark coral supertunia mulberry charm one of my favorites supertunia royal velvet there is a supertunia Sharon in the back there I think it's a really pretty blend of pinks and purples a little bit of white to make it bright right around the base is the nepeta called cat's pajamas which we planted in a video for you guys really early this spring, I still need to shear it back. <laughs> Some of the stuff needs attention in here. Uh, and then right here in the window box, I've got three sprinter boxwoods, which I planted in here last year. Um, they suffered a little tiny bit of tip burn when I trimmed them up really early this spring, but not bad. I need to do a little bit of maintenance here though. I've got a scavola called Whirlwind Pink. There's two of them in this basket. And Superbell's called Strawberry Punch, <laughs> I think. Anyway, they've done really well. They did, um, the zone malfunctioned one time and this whole window basket dried out like bone dry. Everything was super wilted. And that's the thing with drip systems. Even if you have one in place, sometimes something doesn't work. And so you really do have to eyeball everything every day, especially when it's so hot outside. Right below, we've got some daylilies called going bananas. And those typically have yellow blooms on them. They just got done blooming, but I do like the grassy texture right here. And I think they're gonna be the right height because I didn't want anything so tall that it would kind of impede the look of this. I didn't want them to grow together to where it looked like a mass, if that makes sense. I want them to look separate. Right around the whole front area, Supertunia mulberry charm. Isn't that awesome? The thing I love about this plant is that they are so tidy. I mean, they're a Supertunia, so they will, like in containers, they'll, and probably by the end of the season, they'll be touching. Um, and they do grow and, and bloom vigorously like this, but they stay more, they just are a little bit more of a tidy supertunia, and I really appreciate that in some cases. And I really do like that I can still see this brick border. I think it creates a really nice visual distinction between gravel and flower bed. So I think that's important to continue to be able to see that. Right behind it here, we've got several different things. There's some um, Indiglo Girl Salvia. This is its second bloom already. So there's two, let's see, one, two. <laughs> And then play in the blue salvia, I tuck some of those in and those kind of go throughout all the way to the door. So there's play in the blues there, 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 and there. Back planted by Suncredible Sunflowers, which I just wanted this bed to feel kind of abundant, full of color and kind of cottagey because that kind of goes with the flavor of a chicken coop, I think. This is a Miss Violet Budlia, butterfly bush. There's honeybees on it right now. And we've got a weeping Colorado blue spruce. Just some nice winter interest in here. And then our Zephyrin Druin climbing roses, which I still have not pruned. Still, I've been talking about it since early this spring and I have done zero training, zero pruning on those roses. And they are blooming a little bit, which is kind of fun, but I need to get in there and do that eventually. Then we've got some oh so easy peachy keen roses and a weed. Oh, these are the worst. They come up like sometimes they'll get five feet tall before I notice that they're in a flower bed. Uh, but I love, love the growth habit 
and the color of these roses. Look at that perfection right there. Isn't that just like simple and beautiful? I love that you can see the center and that's one of my fave colors. And then more osteospermums in the white color. Kind of wanted to tie the containers in with the uh, landscape plantings here. There are more nepeta right here. And that kind of sums up this flower bed. And as we move on to this side, there is a matching container right here to the other side. And then we did a purple fountain grass, which completely dried up <laughs> right after I planted it. And we continued to water it and it is pushing new growth. So I don't know what the deal was. It did have kind of a swampy smell, the root ball did. So I'm thinking maybe it had too much water when we were taking care of it in the greenhouse. Um, but it's snapping out of it and I love the structure right there. There's some angelonia. This is perfectly pink. More play in the blue salvia. More nepeta. See the repeat? I like having repeats in some areas so that everything looks just cohesive and like it's one and that there's not, like there's a lot going on, but it almost feels like there's not because there's so much repetition. So it's kind of restful in a way to look at it. More super chinia mulberry charm there. Anyway, here's our cottage garden. Uh, Lady Gardener roses here, which I need to deadhead horribly. They are needing some attention, but they've got a really delicate color. Look at that right there. That blush pink apricot. I love it. Uh, we're, I dealt with some chlorosis issues on these this spring uh, and I treated them with iron tone and they look a heck of a lot better. So I think it took a little while because iron tone is a little bit more of a slow acting, but it's a longer uh, feed for the plant. So I think it's really starting to take effect. We've got some serendipity alliums, which are just like the buds are swollen. They're going to burst into beautiful purple bloom here really, really soon. And there's one, two, three, four or five of those in this bed kind of throughout. And then there's some nepeta again. And as we go back in this way, we'll come back just a little ways because this is really filled in beautifully. I've got some hookahs down here. I think those are the spearmint. They have bright pink blooms on them. I actually prefer them just to have foliage. I like the silvery overlay. They need some attention too, a little bit of grooming. Should have probably come out here and looked at this before we did a tour. <laughs> but I think the leaves are beautiful. The peach tree is doing excellent. I was dealing with peach leaf curl this spring. This wisteria is just, gah. Wisteria also needs some attention, like in a bad way. Um, but anyway, it, it's looking really good. I'm still gonna spray it this fall after leaf drop so that I don't deal with leaf curl in next year and I want fruit set, obviously. We want fruit when we have fruit trees, right? And then on this side, we've got another Miss Violet Budlea, an out of control Zephyrin Rose that I need to take care of. This is the Baptisia that I planted early on. It's looking a little tattered. It's getting, you can see, leaf cutter bees. I have a love hate with leaf cutter bees. This is what they do. They come and just chunk out stuff and they like some plants more than others. So anyway, we'll see what happens next year. I'm just keeping my eye on it. And then I've got some Wizard of Oz Veronica right here. Let's head to the brick circle area. That's the other spot I wanted to show you. I uh, will stop here real quick to look at these containers because they are coming along. Uh, we've got juniper spirals here. These are blue point junipers, I believe. Anyway, they will get a little trim once it cools off a little bit. More of the strawberry punch super bells. We have a snowstorm snow globe bacopa, which is blooming on the bottom. Still looks really good up here. It's been super, super hot. So I'm hoping that once it cools off, we get another flush of blooms. I've got sh some Chinook Caladiums here, some Glacier Ivy, and then Superbina Peachy Keen again. And that brings us to this glorious raised bed. I think that this is my favorite. It looks beautiful from this side. Like in particular, I don't know why, but this is my favorite blend ever since we've planted it up. And I think this is the third planting, isn't it, Erin? We've done it three times now. This is my fave. I came in late last season and planted these firelight hydrangeas. I think that was a good move to start putting in some permanent things. Uh, and those are just, aren't they gorgeous? I mean, they'll get way bigger than this, um, but this is their first year in the ground, like their first full season. And they're blooming beautifully. They're an amazing shape and they're incorporating so well with the things we planted below them. So we've got more play in the blue salvia in here, which is one of my favorite annuals. 
I would say Plan the Blue Salvia, Golden Dreams Coleus. I don't know, my list is kind of long, but it ranks really high up there, along with Supertunia Mulberry Charm as well. Anyway, beautiful salvia. And then we've got the Truffula Pink Gomfrina, which you guys might remember, I planted this up front, in front of our house last year in mass. It got enormous and it had a smell. I don't smell that this year. I didn't plant near as many in this space, of course, and they're not quite as thick as they were up front. And I don't know what the difference is, but do you smell it? I don't smell it at all, which is nice. I was a little bit nervous. I thought, oh, hopefully wherever I put this, I don't have that kind of weird smell that it put off last year. And then the lower level here is a uh, Angelonia called Cascade White. So it's a type of Angelonia that grows kind of out rather than in. So it was kind of this perfect border plant. And I also didn't want anything here that spilled too um, much, too strictly, like a strictly weep, weeping plant. I didn't want it to cover the edge. I wanted there to be distinction between ground and the top level of the raised bed, therefore giving it a more tidy appearance instead of looking like kind of this mess that you don't know where it starts and where it ends kind of a deal. I did end up with one Angelonia that's an upright. <laughs> this is a super white right here. So we've got nice cascade all the way around and then this tall one which is kind of funny. I don't know how they got messed up or mixed up. I am noticing on these that they are getting a bit too much water. So this is what they'll start to look like. These are not chloros, chlorotic or iron deficient or whatever you want to call it. That is a water stress from a little bit too much. Um, so that's good to know. So we've kind of been watching it and not supplementing with water as much as we were when we very first planted. So they should start bouncing back and greening back up. And it is getting hot already. It's supposed to be close to 100 degrees today. So we wanted to get out here early enough in the morning to show this to you um, before it got really hot, but I'm already, I'm already dripping. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this kind of mini tour and it's kind of a glimpse, I guess, into what's to come once we have a chance to put together a full tour. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.